So this is part two of the Indie vs. AAA game development and we're going to talk about code, more specifically about if you're some kind of programmer or engineer, this part will be specific to you. The code base is probably going to be massive. That's pretty much a guarantee in a AAA game. It's going to be absolutely huge. And just taking Unreal Engine as an example, it will probably be multiple millions of lines of code. And I'm going to just look at Unreal Engine 4. This is Unreal Engine 4 without a game in it. This is just the engine. And I'm going to just, I've just looked at the headers and CPP files. There was 8,500 runtime files just in the code alone. So that's not lines of code, that's files containing code. Um, and then for the editor, there's another 4,800 files. There's 1,500 files in the developer section, which is like unit tests and stuff like that. And there's 35,000 third-party files all containing source code. So what's that, like 50,000 source files? So, so that's not lines of code, that's number of files that need to be compiled to make this game, well, make this engine work. And there's not even a game in that yet. So um, to say that they're like, huge is just an understatement and that doesn't even include all the shaders doesn't include all support code like the build scripts that are written in c sharp or whatever python files that they've got and it doesn't include any of the third-party libraries because they're all proprietary and you have to have access to those to be able to get them so code base massive now the code base because it's so big it probably took a long time to make and because it took a long time to make it means that a lot of the people who made it and who made parts of it probably don't work at the company anymore. So uh, yeah, that code base is going to last for a long time and it's a very good chance that the programmer who wrote the code has gone and there probably won't be any documentation or the documentation will be incomplete um, or, or it'll be wrong. So the, you're going to have to expect that when it comes to documenting existing systems that it, the documentation probably won't be really up to scratch even though you would expect that because the person who wrote it has gone, so we needed that documentation, but that didn't work. Uh, sometimes it's, there's not always a clear ownership of it, so the person who wrote it has left, and everyone's kind of disowned the code, and maybe you're the one who's got to fix it, who knows. And yeah, there may be nobody to talk to who even knows what that code really does, and they'll just say, I don't know, you work it out. So that's it, you just have to sit there and uh, do what Kermit's doing there and just try and work it out. So given that, that the code is massive, this is the problem of readability uh, just rears its head here because if you're going to write 10 million lines of code and it's all unreadable, you're going to be screwed, like super screwed. And there will be some unreadable code, but I think it's your job to make it more readable. And if you write any code, other people are going to have to read through it because the team's large. So when something goes wrong with that code, someone's going to have to read through it. And also you're going to have to read through it in a year's time and work out what it did and work out what you were thinking that day. So readability of code makes a huge difference. So when I talk about readability of code, I'm not talking about commenting the crap out of it because generally what you'll find is there probably aren't a lot of comments in the code anyway uh, in a AAA game, but even if there are, you'll find that they're just generally wrong. So that's like, that's a big problem. So take, for example, uh, this, what, what does this function do? This is totally unreadable. I, I look at the head of this and what does that function do? It takes an int and it returns an int and it's called f. <laughs> Could do anything. You might think, well, let's fix that. Let's put a comment on it. Now, now this makes more sense. That function is now quite clearly a factorial function. So we've made the code more readable, but really we haven't. We've just added a comment and the problem with comments is they go out of date. They're generally not as trivial as this. A better solution would have been to change the name of that function, call it factorial, and delete the comment. And now we know exactly what that does and we can tell that just by looking at it. It takes an in, returns an in, and it's a factorial function. Um, another big problem with commenting is just parroting the code. Just rewrite the exactly what the code said and that's just really bad as well. So this, this is a piece of code that increments the timer and someone's put a comment on it to say increment the timer. And it's quite clear that if you delete that comment, you didn't need that comment it's just the comment is just noise at this point it's just making the code worse and the other thing is if someone changes that line of code are they even going to change the comment probably not really increment the timer that comment should be deleted that that piece of code is perfectly readable as it is anyone reading that knows exactly what it does so then the question should be where should you actually use comments and the answer is you should use comments 
Well, I think you should use them in interfaces uh, to describe, you know, how does this, if you haven't got access to the code to read, how would you call this function? What would it returns values be? Stuff like that. You should definitely, when you're putting comments into the code, you should you should really try and first try and not write the comment and refactor the code so it's more readable, like the timer plus delta time, which is totally readable on its own. The comment should say things that the code couldn't describe. So if we take this, we've got normal to an enemy and we're dotting it with a view direction and if we're saying it's a less than zero, then we're gonna, we're gonna write a flag called ignore. Now that's clearly, to me, is saying, that if the enemy is behind me, I'm going to ignore it. So that code's perfectly readable, meets all the readability things. It doesn't really need a comment from that respect. But what it does need a comment is why are we ignoring enemies behind us? Now that's the thing that the code can't tell me. It can tell me I'm ignoring enemies behind me, but it can't tell me why. So now it might have this kind of comment, like enemies behind the player can't be attacked because the character animation isn't supporting it. So now I know the code's readable, and I know why that code has been there. That's what comments should be telling you about why this piece of code exists. It shouldn't be repeating what the code is and it, it shouldn't be used in a place where I could have rewritten the code to make it more reasonable. So another thing is you need to leave the game in a working state, which might not be something you do if you're working on a title for yourself. You could you know, check out the end of the day and just like leave everything in completely screwed up. There might be a hundred people working on this who now can't do any work because they're just trying to place a rock on a level and they can't do it because your piece of code is crashing. Any code that you put in and check into version control has to be maybe not functional, but it has to be like non-intrusive. It shouldn't break the game. So for that reason, if you do check in something, you're probably going to need to spend longer like making sure that it works. Um, before you do or making sure that it's not like if it crashes the editor that's really bad that's not what you want so your code doesn't have to work because generally code is always in a flux state of flux it's moving towards working um, you need to be sure that you are checking your work and making sure that you're not screwing the other 100 team members and stopping them from working because if you check in some code that stops 100 people working for half an hour that's that's 50 hours of work gone you've wasted a week of people's time by taking 30 minutes of their day. So don't do that. And to that effect, to make sure your code works, you probably should be writing tests for it. And if you're not, then, well, it's 2020, get with the program. If you do break the build, because you, you probably will eventually, then you need to be able to fix it fast. And that might be by taking out the code that you've put in or putting in a bodge to change your code back to a working state, even if the function that you were trying to get doesn't now work anymore. You know, at least getting the game stable um, is the big thing here. So get it stable until you can make a proper fix uh, for whatever you've done wrong. So that leads straight into you should be like careful when you're changing the code. You should be trying not to break anything, but you shouldn't be afraid to change it because if you if you don't ever break the game, you're probably not trying hard enough. So you you know you if you're too afraid to change anything, you're never going to change anything at all. Don't be like cavalier, but but do you know go in there and make changes. And if you do spot things that are wrong, you should try and just clean them up. So uh, the other thing is that you'll probably spend a lot more time on bugs in a AAA game than you would in an indie game because you probably going to be more bugs because they're just the bigger team so you're going to spend time tracking down bugs for systems that you didn't write or bugs that you didn't create and places that you don't know anything about so that's a bigger problem like when it's a small team and it's just your code or just a couple of people's code it's usually quite easy and you know the code very well and if it's a problem you you know in your head what it is before you've even got anywhere with games like this they take on a life of their own and, and the bugs can just become immense if, if another d developer leaves a bug in the code which is stopping others from working, like I was talking about before, maybe someone does check in something that breaks the game, but they just go home and it's Friday, then you might be left with trying to fix that. And every now and again, someone will screw you by not checking their work properly, checking something in, and you have to spend 30 minutes working out why your editor crashes or why you can't pick up an item in your game or something like that. So you have to stop doing what you're doing and bodge your code or put in a fix just so that you can keep working while this other person puts their fix in, or maybe you just have to put the fix in yourself. And then when a problem does arise, one of the one of the big problems here is that it's not really always that clear who is supposed to work on it. Is it a graphical problem? Is it a gameplay problem? Is it an audio problem? Is it a combination of all three? Quite often bugs will get assigned to the wrong team or the wrong people and get passed about before they get to the right person. And the code's changing all the time. So that, um, so yeah, bugs in, bugs in other systems 
are going to cause problems in your code so your code's going to break more often than it would have done otherwise because you might you might curate those changes before they go in but now systems are just changing and maybe someone doesn't quite understand how your stuff works so that's it really that's just a quick look at code if you're used to working on a game with one or two people working on the code and then you go to a game with like four or ten or a hundred uh, you know a lot of programmers they can be they can be very you know they can be dozens and dozens though so it does get very very large um, so that's the kind of problems you might come across and um, the kind of things you should expect if you're looking to get into AAA. But it, it's not all like, I'm mostly like looks really bad from all this, but it's, the good thing about working in a large team is you get a lot of stuff done. You, you know, the, the progress is slower, the number of bugs is higher, but a bunch of different people can be working on a bunch of systems and they can go into the game and you can make games that are way more complex than you ever could, you know, working on your own. So it, it's a good thing that you can have a lot of people working on a game, a lot of programmers, but um, you can definitely trip up a lot, especially if you don't keep on top of bugs and you don't do proper testing and that kind of thing. So I hope that was of some use to somebody.